Um, thank you, Meg. You can praise the Lord. Sometimes you just get in and you don't know where how to get out, do you? That's all right, isn't it? It's all right that we don't know how to get out. And uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um, in Matthew chapter 9, let's just see where this goes. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Um, let's just go here together tonight and see where the Lord wants to take it. Um, we have this uh, passage of Scripture. It says, Then Jesus, Matthew 9, 35, Then Jesus went by all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore pray that the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. You know, I think it's interesting because the Bible says that Jesus saw the multitudes and it says that there that they were scattered like sheep with no shepherd. And I think that's interesting because a sheep has to have a shepherd. A sheep has to have a model. A sheep has to have somebody to follow. Jesus was telling these disciples, Hey, listen, these people are scattered behind the mountains, right? But they're looking for a model. They're looking for somebody to lead them. Now we understand that Jesus is the great shepherd. He's the, but the deal is, is that we're all shepherding people. It's just not talking about the great shepherd or the under shepherds being pastors. We're talking about people leading others. Amen. And he says right here, he said, listen, there's a, the harvest is, is, is plentiful. People look to a model. People look to a model. And, 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 and my concern, my concern is, is that it seems that to be, and I, and I posted this on Facebook today because I, Help me, and this is where I kind of want to, this is how this message kind of got started this, this morning for me, was this, is that we, we, we let the things that, that we see and experience, that we commonly see and experience, the common things that we see and experience, like it's the normal. Listen, cancer is common, but it's not normal. Right? And if you and I don't watch out, what will end up happening is, is that we'll let the common things begin to change our perspective and become normal. Right? We'll look at addiction, right? Let's think about addiction a second. Right? That, that's a common thing today, is it not? See, if you don't watch out, what will happen is that you and I will get to the place where we begin to say, well, that's the norm. When that's not the norm. That's not the normal. So, so Jesus says, listen, I want you to, I, I want you to pray. And notice, notice what he says. He said, don't just pray. Don't pray for the harvest. He didn't say pray for the harvest. Over there in Matthew's gospel, I think it's the 26th chapter. And there's, I think there's another place in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the gospels. But, but remember the lady with the alabaster box? Remember that lady? And she broke it all and she poured it out on Jesus. Remember that? And they got upset at Jesus because, well, uh, uh, that could have been sold and, and that money given to the 
poor. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, the poor you will always have with you. What was Jesus saying? Your all ministry is going to be around you all the time. Ministry is going to always be around you. Jesus didn't pray. Listen, he said, he didn't pray for, he said, don't pray for the harvest. Because you're always going to have harvest around you. In John 4, right, Jesus was talking to that woman at the well, right? And he ta- talks to her and tells her everything, everything about her life. And she goes back to the town. And, and all of a sudden, it, Jesus says these words, Lift up your eyes and look into the fields, for they are white already for harvest. Harvest is around everywhere. People are bound. People need, people need to live for, but they need a model. My concern is, is that we're letting the common become the normal. Let's not let the common become the normal. Come on. The next thing you know, cancer is just a common thing. So the next thing you want, it's just normal for people to die of cancer. Come on, somebody. That's not normal. Hate. Think about this. Think about this. A hate. That's a common thing today, is it not? Political strife and division. It's a common thing. And if you don't watch out, that will become the normal. Jesus said this, he said, look, he said, he said, I need laborers to be sent into the harvest field. I need laborers sent into the harvest field. I need people that are going to go and influence for me. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I'll make you an influencer. I'll make you into it. So when you first start following Jesus for somebody, for once you first start following Jesus, listen here, it doesn't make you all of a sudden a super Christian. He says, I'm going to make you into this. I'm committed to make you what you are called to be. I'm committed to bring you into your destiny. I'm committed to bring you into the person that you already are. You just don't know it yet. See, because you are already that. But you just got to walk into that. See, the thing is, I think it's interesting because the Bible causes light, it causes leaven, it causes salt, it causes seed, it causes trees, it causes things. The Bible calls us as Christians things that influence things. We're influencers. My concern is this that we're not influencing. This is the challenge, I, I, I thought about this. Me and Christian, we experienced this a couple weeks ago when we, was ate, we ate breakfast together. And that, that lady, she come over. I, I, this is my challenge to you. Because, see, people, people are not used to people walking out the gospel. They're not used to that. There's people in churches that don't do this. There might be people in this room that don't do this. That you hide your light. And Jesus said, don't you dare hide it under a bushel. You let your light so shine before man. You put it high on a candlestick. That means it gives light to everything that comes in the room. Am I, am I making sense? Well, I'm just going here. So this is the deal. Is that we, I want to put a challenge to you. The next time you go to the restaurant. All right. And I want you, when they bring that food, they're already captive. Right? And I want you to sit there, and before you go and you take the food, they always ask you, what, they always ask you what's that final thing? They always, Is there what? Anything else I can give you? Why don't we just stop and say, hey, listen, is there anything I could pray for you about? Because we're getting ready to pray over our food. happened did it not lady at the lady at uh, tutors and the next thing you know she's bawling crying and we was able to lay our hands on her bless her I didn't lead her to Jesus I blessed her I just blessed her This is not common, Chris. It should be. 
It's not common, but this is normal. This is what Jesus, he, he told us to go. My question is to you tonight, why are you fearful about going? It's because we care more about what people think about us than what he thinks about us. And when I understand his love for me, I'm done. If I understand I'm accepted by him, I'm done. It doesn't matter what anybody says about me. Because I'm loved. Are you with me? I want to encourage you to begin to go to the mountains and set people free. You carry the kingdom. It's in you. I'm just encouraging. I'm not telling you anything tonight that you don't know. This was the p- first part of my message. I'm certainly not going to get there, and I'm not going to try to do that to this message. It's too good to do that. So Jesus said the game changers are the laborers. So that means that the harvest should never dictate what the laborers are doing. The laborers, he's, I need people that's going to go and into the, the, you're always going to have harvest around you. You're going to have people around you. Amen. Go with me over to Luke's gospel. Let me just, Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 19. You guys all right? All right, we'll, we'll close her down in a second. Just let me just encourage you tonight. Now, now listen, this ought to encourage you. This is what you're made for. This is why you're alive. This is why you're in the kingdom. You didn't get saved just to go to heaven. Come on. You're saved for the kingdom. You're saved to make an impact. You're saved. Jesus came and put heaven on the inside of you. But it's always about sometime, somewhere. I say, why not right now? This is why you're saved. It's why you're born again. You wonder why people don't want anything to do with the gospel. Let me tell you why. Nobody's doing the gospel. Right? And when you and I start doing this thing, things start happening. This thing gets fun. Gets real fun. Luke 19. Is this where I want to go? Mm. I don't know if that's where I want to go or not. No, it's not where I want to go. So, let me see if I can find it. Mm, nope. Well, okay. Praise the Lord. Hold on. It's coming to me. Stay, stay, stay with me. Mm, it's not it is. All right. Well, Jesus said this is, and I, you might have to, may have to Google this. Someone help me out. I need to show you this one for sure. Hold on, it's coming. It, I keep thinking it's in Matthew. It's not. Well, um. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's right there. But Jesus said it like this. He said, he said, from John, I said, all the prophets until John, they proclaimed one thing. He said, but when I came, the kingdom of God came. And now everybody is pressing in to the kingdom. Now, that's something you can find that. You can put pressing into the kingdom, and that will give it to me, I guarantee you. Help me out. Someone help me. Luke 16, 16. Yeah, that's it. And on the eighth day, God created Google. I put 1916 in my notes is what it was. It's 1616. Look here. It says the law and the prophets were until John. 
since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is what? Pressing into it. He said the law and the prophets until John proclaimed one message. But when I came on the scene, I changed the subject. I became the message. And now because the kingdom of God is being preached, because the kingdom of God is being proclaimed, everybody now is pressing into it. Listen, let me ask you a question. How would you like to say something that everybody wants to be a part of? He said, the kingdom of God now, this is, he said, when they, when they were preaching one thing, but when I came on the scene, I changed the subject. I, I became the subject. I'm now, I brought the kingdom of God with me, and now the kingdom of God is here, and now people are pressing into the kingdom. I'm not talking about salvation tonight. Salvation is a part of it, but it's not the gospel of salvation. That's one part. This is the gospel of the kingdom. And see, the kingdom of God is different. See, we're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about his rule and influence in the heart of man, which starts at salvation. But the kingdom of God now moves into a place where it begins to manifest itself in the world through the believer. And all of a sudden, that influence that was in our hearts, we begin to touch people and influence it. Everywhere I go, light comes. Everywhere I go, the kingdom of God now has... There's an opportunity for the kingdom of God to come forth. God's rule and reign, his sovereignty, what he wants. What did Jesus pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy on as it is in. What is God's will? Heaven on earth. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? Everybody, everybody's looking for a model. And I'm really concerned because I think a lot of people are confused about what Christianity is. Amen. I'm talking about his kingdom. I'm talking about his rule, his reign, his influence on the heart of man that then begins to be demonstrated through a person. So when people have hope instilled, love, when they're loved, people that are loved. You know, I was talking to Cal Clanahan the other day and he was telling me, you know, some of his adventures. Cal, he prays with anybody. He'll at the drop of the hat and he'll be the one that drops the hat. But he said he was out and they was in a park and they were witnessing and stuff. And he said this girl walked up to him, or she walked up to a girl and he asked, you know, about, he says, can I pray with you? She said, well, I'm a, I'm a homosexual. She said, you guys don't like me. Now, isn't that sad? Come on, isn't it sad now? This is sad. Because her, she wasn't coming in contact with the kingdom. She'd been coming, common, coming in contact with fear. I love what Cal told her. He said, that's okay. He said, God still loves you. Now let me pray with you. Well, do you have to touch me? No, you don't have to touch you. I'm going to pray for you. Am I making sense to anything? Anybody know? I'm trying to sew this up here. See, we have people that are scattered like sheep. And they're looking for somebody to model it. What does this look like? Right? Something that's supernatural to be seen in the natural. Right? We got to fully preach the good news to people. Amen. I said fully preach it. You said, well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are a preacher. Can you proclaim truth? Absolutely you can. You you are a preacher. We got to fully preach the gospel. We got to fully preach the gospel to people. Now, what's this mean? I'm going to close it right here. What does it mean to fully preach the gospel? Look what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 15 up here on the screen. 
Romans 15. For I will dare not to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient. Verse 19. In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about to Elycrium I have fully what? Preached the gospel of Christ. Now how does he fully preach it? Go back up to verse, verse 18. He said he... He accomplished through me in word and in what? How do we fully preach the gospel? Word and deed. This is the key. We can say lots of things. But does our life reflect it? People are very confused because they have no model. Come on, somebody. I mean, you start thinking about stuff like a social drinking. I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody in this room is doing that. But social drinking. And I'm under grace. Yeah, you are. I get it. I understand that. But you're causing a lot of people to stumble. A lot. Come out from among them and be ye separate. I don't see anybody's doing that. Or tear on the dirty joke at the water cooler. I'm under grace, Pastor Paul. I get it, you are. But grace is not an empowerment to sin. Or an empowerment to, 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 to sin. It's an empowerment to get you out of sin. It's an empowerment to walk holy before God. You cannot, listen, you start getting grace. Grace and holiness work together. I'm not trying to bring anybody in bondage or legalism. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you and I in word and in deed fully preaching the gospel to people. Word and deed. Come on, you can say a lot of things. When we say, come on, let's be honest. We can say a lot of things when we're sitting right here in this room. Right? But the test is happening outside the doors tonight. Right? We're, we're tomorrow morning. Right? And, and the deal is, is that we got lots of people that are behind mountains. And, and Jesus said, listen, when I come on the scene, the message changed. The kingdom of God now is within you. I've put my kingdom now in you. Now go and release the kingdom. That's our job. It's called normal. It's normal for people to pray. It's normal for us to bring hope. It's just normal. Not weird. But don't you let the things that are common today start to change what's normal. Amen. Next week, <laughs> the Lord willing, I want to talk to you about the beauty of holiness. And I want you to really Listen, this message here will change our life. And I want to teach you what holiness is. And holiness is not something that you... Uh, when I say holiness, a lot of people it's like broccoli to them. And a lot of times in Christianity, we think there's packages. Like, it's like buying a car. Like, I, I want the base package. I just want the base package. And then I'll have the add-on package. And I'll have the next package. This is not the way that Christianity is. You get the package. It's the deluxe. The supersized. Right? Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you have to deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. What's he saying? There's no package deal. It's one package. And it's him. And when I have him, things change. Okay, so I want you to come and I want you to hear this message I have on holiness because it will change your life. Holiness is not what you think it is. Okay, it's not long hair. It's true. Not skirts. Now, will it affect those things? Absolutely. Come on. Because why? There's a highway of holiness. And people are treading that highway.
we don't want to put stones in the highway. That way they can't get to their healing and deliverance and what all they need from the Lord. doesn't mean we're perfect. There's nobody in this room that's perfect. Right? Not, not a one. Nobody. We're not perfect. But we serve the perfect one, and he wants to work holiness out in our lives. That way we become a reflection of him. Holiness is, the, is beautiful. I'm leaving you with that. You worship God in the beauty of holiness. Do you know why it's so beautiful? Do you know why holiness is beautiful? Why the Bible talks about the Bible? The Bible says the, that, 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 that holiness is beautiful. You know why that is? Because Jesus is beautiful. And holiness is Jesus. Holiness being set apart. It means unlike no other. That's what the word means. Unlike no other. So when we are declaring the holiness of God, how holy, we sing holy, 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 Lord God. Or what are we saying? There's none like you. Amen. When the Bible calls you to holiness, which it does, it's saying there's none like you. You're different. You're a strange bird. No, I'm just normal. Right? I'm just a normal. This is normal Christianity. Let's not relegate this thing to coming to church. Please. And if that's the reason it is, we've missed the boat. <laughs> right? Let's not relegate this to two hours on a win or an hour on a Wednesday, hour and fifteen minutes on a Wednesday, and, and a two hours on a Sunday morning. Let's not do that. Let's live it outside these doors. Let's take Jesus to the world. The world is waiting. The harvest is plentiful. He said, Pray for the labors. Father, tonight I pray for the labors. I pray for me. Lord, I need prayer. I do. Lord, I need to have that God in my life. I need prayer in my life. I need to be transformed into your image. I need, Lord God, to be transformed, God. I, I want to be transformed that way that I can meet my destiny, which is being conformed to the image of God's Son. That's my destiny. Why am I here, Lord? Why am I here? I'm here to reflect you. I wake up tomorrow morning and my job is to reflect you. I wake up tomorrow morning. What is it, Lord God? Why am I on this earth? For your image. For your image and for relationship. I'm alive to reflect you to the world. That people can see you and come to know you and travel the highway of holiness into their destiny. There's a highway, and it's called holiness. Lord, tonight I pray for every person in this room that we would be people that would not let the common determine the normal. Not letting the common deter us. Not letting what we see every day say that's the way it is. Let us get back to the book of Acts. That's the normal. Let us get back. Let us get back to true, primal Christianity. Primal Christianity. What's that mean, Lord? What's that mean, sir? Primal Christianity. Thank you for a church, God, that does the work. These people do it. I know they do. I'm just stirring them up to go. Be bold. We'll see the miracles, church, if we'll just do. We'll see things shift if we'll just do. If we'll just do. There will be laborers, true laborers, people that has an assignment and wants to finish the assignment. To go, to be, to do. We work out of our salvation. So Lord, I pray over this congregation of people tonight, God, as we release. I thank you, Lord, tonight that you're doing great things in all of our hearts. You're changing us from glory. 
thank you for it. Every head bowed, every